I'm not sure why Lionsgate decided to drop their horror cobweb the same weekend as Barbie and Oppenheimer, but it certainly did restrict how many screens it would play on. But now it's available on demand. So is this one gonna deliver some scares? Horror strikes when an eight-year-old boy named Peter tries to investigate the mysterious knocking noises that are coming from inside the walls of his house. Woody Norman stars as Peter, the young boy who's suffering from nightmares and believes that he hears knocking coming from the other side of his bedroom wall. And it's established very early on that Peter has an overactive imagination and that he's been dealing with nightmares for quite some time. So now as we meet him, he might be an unreliable narrator or there's something really going on. Now, I recently saw Norman in The Last Voyage of the Demeter, and he was also superb in Come On, Come On with Joaquin Phoenix. Here, he encompasses all the emotions and the fear that you'd expect. He's also bullied at school, and almost incessantly. So not only does he become afraid of his house, he also dreads the reprieve that school should afford him. There are some things that Peter does that feel a bit foolish, especially within a horror movie, but he's a kid so it's more forgivable. And as my son once told me too, characters don't always know the genre they're in. So if you don't know you're in a horror movie, it could make sense to investigate something. Personally, I'd be noping right out of there, but then the movie would be short and dumb. Lizzie Kaplan stars as Peter's mom, and she brings a special level of creep and unease to her character. She's consistently on edge, behaves very suspiciously, I mean, almost sketchy in how secretive she comes across. And then she also appears very paranoid to the point of obsession. She locks doors behind her, she is, always has just her keys attached to her belt, and she's consistently keeping tabs on Peter, like she fears he could disappear at any second. And we don't know her motivations, and this mystery, it helps to amp up the creep factor. Anthony Starr plays Peter's dad, and it's as if he's channeling Homelander through so much of this. He's got a smile that is somewhat friendly, but mostly sinister. And he's consistently on the verge of what seems like a breaking point, where he's just going to go off his rocker and take everyone and everything out around him. Now, there are very few, if any, portions of his character where he doesn't come across as unsettled. And I loved him in this role. Although he plays much more of a minor role than Norman and Kaplan, he does bring a sense of menace to the tone that easily creates a chill within the story. Finally, there's Cleopatra Coleman. She plays Peter's substitute teacher, and I really enjoyed the care and concern that her character embodies. I don't think her actions spark of any reality because she visits Peter's house a couple of times, and while a teacher would rarely do that, a sub certainly wouldn't take the time. But it does show the heart of her character, someone who is very protective and empathetic. She's also inquisitive and mostly smart. I mean, there are times when she will put herself in potential danger, but it's for a noble cause. So she's willing to sacrifice her safety for the benefit of others. And that makes a character that we want to root for. The mood and the tone this story establishes is awesome. It's foreboding and ominous, just reinforced by a spooky looking old house that's in disrepair. Soft lights illuminate the rooms, providing shadowy corners and then places to obscure visuals. And then the camera is very patient when building up suspense and dread. There will be slow push-ins towards a creaking door as it just slowly swings open. I mean, it builds anticipation that something is suddenly going to appear and freak us out. Or the camera will focus on an opening that's pitch black. And I was sitting there just staring, willing my eyes to see what was in the darkness. Also, waiting for the silence to be broken by this sudden musical sting that accompanies a jump scare. Now, luckily, there are very few jump scares. One is shown in the trailer, and I really wish it wasn't, but more often than not, what provides the intensity and the terror is the lack of seeing something. We're shown many scenarios where it's expected to have something freak us out, teasing us and making it entirely unpredictable at when something is going to make us leap from our seats. There are also visuals within this that are unsettling, to say the least. And I love it when a movie will be focusing on one thing, but something else is going on in the background. It's sort of a blink and you miss it scenario. And that thing in the background, it usually isn't right. Like, it's got to go. Now, something I appreciate about this is that I couldn't tell until the climax whether this was all in Peter's head, if it was really happening, or if there was a supernatural element to what we're watching. And that mystery created so much uncertainty, which then became uneasiness and then fear. When we're given the answer, it's mostly satisfying. I mean, I think it's not going to please everybody, and there is some logic that needs to be suspended, but overall, the buildup results in a good payoff. Now, for me, I thought this was more atmospheric and creepy than A24's Talk to Me. Now, I liked that movie, but it couldn't maintain its tension all the way through, taking us on more of a roller coaster ride of ups and downs in Freaktown. 
And with Cobweb, there is a dreadful sentiment that starts almost immediately and continues until the credits. And there are some obvious and predictable points along the way, and not every single moment works, but the story does hold on to the anxiety and the nervousness throughout. There's also a sequence that focuses on some outsiders, and I know this is included so that we can get the brutal scenes that some are hoping for. The inclusion and the execution, though, they feel generic and staged. I mean, these people wear masks, but one with or without a mask is going to be absolutely obvious, and that makes the whole setup feel very convenient. And there are some wonderful practical effects and makeup that are at work here, and they look stunning. Again, it's just reinforcing the atmosphere of a demented and twisted horror house. And as might be expected, this does include an element of gore to it. I mean, it's not just all mental scares, but imagery too that is gross and impressive. Now, there's one bit where you definitely need to suspend any disbelief because it's just not plausible at all, but that doesn't take away from the awesome effect that we witness. It was abrupt and shocking, and it made me laugh out loud. And not because it was funny, but just as a release of dread. The film uses its time really well. It's only 88 minutes long, so it's short but effective. And while it may seem like some development on characters goes unanswered, we are given resolutions and the appropriate background to have it all make sense. Now, I think there probably could have been even more that's delivered to us, but sometimes that vagueness works to keep things mysterious. So overall, I loved the suspense and dread that Cobweb delivers. Ominous tones with sinister appearing characters all contained within a decrepit and spooky house are reinforced by excellent camera teases and the patience to withhold scares until the audience is at a breaking point. There are some conveniences within the story that hamper the narrative, but the performances and the atmosphere work to create a disturbing horror that's going to get under your skin. It's been a great time for horror films recently, so be sure to add Cobweb to your list if you're in the mood for a fright. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and a bunch of gruesome violence. I give Cobweb four out of five couches. So what's your favorite horror movie of the year so far? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.